Hi, my name is Russ, and I'm going to put together a short video for my YouTube channel on how to check for a bad head gasket. The term head gasket kind of makes people scream with fear because they're notoriously expensive to fix and they're very labor intensive. Um, so I thought I'd throw together a video on how we used to check for a bad head gasket when I was a mechanic years ago. We used something called a block tester. Um, it is a ball camp product sold at NEPA. And here's the part number in case you want to jot this down, 700-1006. It consists of three units, three parts. Here's a tube right here. It's a, a plastic tube with rubber ends. Obviously this side's tapered. It's got a hole in this side and it has a hole in this side. There's a special element in there. And the way this works is it comes with the second part, test fluid. It's blue, very dark blue. And the third element it comes with is a bulb. One end of the bulb has a hole in it. The other end is capped. I have to look at the monitor off to the side here, I'm sorry, uh, to see if I'm pointing in the right direction. But essentially what you do is you take the fluid and you pour enough fluid in here to fill it up to the fill level. You take this tapered end, it goes into the radiator of your car. And then you take this end here, which is a, a, a bulb, you would then uh, uh, put it inside of here, and you would suck the uh, uh, gases up through this side, through the element, and through the fluid. Okay. On the vehicle, the cooling system needs to be at least, they say a few inches off, you know, uh, three to six inches down. I like to drain the radiators at least halfway. Um, <clears throat> we used to drain them quite a bit in the shop. But essentially what happens is we, we place this into the neck of the radiator and we suck the combustion, or I'm sorry, we, we, we suck the fumes from the radiator through this assembly. And what we look for is a change in color of, of the fluid, okay? So that's basically the, how it works. Uh, we'll cut to the next section where I'm showing you a little bit more about uh, the process. All right, uh, before we get started here, I wanted to mention a couple more things about this test unit. Um, the kit that you saw runs about 40 bucks at Napa, a little over 40 bucks. And it includes the three components that I showed you. However, you can buy the test fluid in a replacement bottle for about $7. They say that the, the uh, replacement fluid has a shelf life of about two years or so. So it's pretty affordable to, to do that. Now what will happen is we will put this in, in the top of the radiator neck and run the engine with the coolant at a low level so that we're sucking only uh, fumes through here that, that's, that are inside the cooling system. And what it will try to detect, what it's sniffing with the element and the special chemical in here, it's sniffing for combustion fumes, also known as compression fumes. There should never be any kind of exhaust-related or compression-related fumes inside the cooling system because there's a seal in between the cylinder head and the lower block to keep those all separated. If you have an issue, what will happen is this fluid being blue will turn first green, which does indicate that you have an issue, and then yellow if you really have an issue. In either case, my suggestion would be to replace the head gasket, of course, if, you, if it does not stay blue. Um, along with that, you will probably need to take the cylinder head and send it into a machine shop to have that lower surface checked for straightness. They can re resurface that bottom edge to make sure that it's safe because what happens if, very quickly is if you have a lower block and a cylinder head that are bolted together with a seal in between, the head is smaller than the lower block is bigger. And typically that upper head is, a lot of today's cars, is made of aluminum and that lower block is very commonly is made of cast iron. So a much thicker, heavier, uh, larger, massive metal. So if you heat both of them up to a billion degrees, which one would actually deform first? Well, it would be the smaller chunk of metal, meaning the cylinder head. They can also check it for cracks, in which case there's different technologies today as compared to when I was mechanicing. If they were cracked, they were junk. But I've seen some cylinder heads actually be repaired for cracks today, okay? So uh, you wanna go ahead and jack up the car safely, drain the cooling system out, 
uh, at least the radiator down at a good level. Of course, when you run this, you want to have an assistant shut the car off. Don't let it overheat more than it needs to. If you have a if you have a compression leak or a combustion leak, and uh, you should be able to to detect it with this process prior to the thing heating way up on the temperature gauge. So it's a good idea to do that. Use your safety goggles and we'll get going on this test. These are really cool. They're available from Lowe's. I love them. My daughter got them for me for Christmas. I know. I look like a goof. Okay, let's get started. Just started it, it's dead cold. Right. I'll let it run for a bit. I can already see pretty little green there. Seems dead cold. Okay. I know it's cold, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this camera in. You can see that it's turning green. All right, you don't need to see me pump the bulb. Right, I'll just do a little few pumps here. Yeah, it's turning green. And it's dead cold, so that's an indicator that it's not taking a whole lot of effort for that compression and combustion fumes to get in there. Okay, I'm gonna hop up and check the temperature real quick. I highly doubt it. The temperature gauge at this point is not even registering. It's still just dead cold. Okay, so let's uh, let's let her set here for a minute. Okay, the temperature gauge is already almost half. That was pretty quickly. That's another indicator that we have compression problems is when the thing heats up pretty quickly. And as you can see, it's turning pretty yellow already. Okay. Green for sure. I'm just pumping the bulb. So as you can see, it's pretty green. And uh, if I hold it up, it's it's really starting to turn yellow. So uh, we'll be pulling the head off of this uh, oh so fun Nissan, which is dual overhead cam. Got some kind of automated retard on the intake cam side that requires compressed air to release it. Um, it's got two timing chains on it. Um, I would say over-engineered for sure. Uh, it's a four-cylinder. It doesn't run any faster than my Toyota that has a timing belt. So it would take about, you know, three hours to change. This will take me three weeks. So anyway, hopefully the, the uh, video was informational for you and useful for you. Thanks.